So last class we looked at the quadratic formula. And the quadratic formula gives you the roots, okay? When is, uh, or what is the value of x and y equals zero? Another method to solve. And I asked you to describe the roots. There's a shorter method to describe the roots rather than solving for the roots and then telling me what type of numbers you have for x. And that's by just looking at the discriminant. The discriminant is the number underneath the radical. So there'll be some questions that say to evaluate the discriminant. So the, the discriminant is the b squared minus 4ac. It's the number under the radical. Okay? And remember, you can have two solutions to a quadratic. You can have one solution, but you can put a star because that's the double root. And x squared degree 2 equation should have two solutions. But sometimes the solutions are equal, so that's actually a double root. Or zero real solutions, because if it doesn't cross the x-axis, then the solutions are imaginary or complex. So you can determine the number of solutions as well as the type by just looking at this. It's shorter. Okay, so in the first row we have the equation x squared minus 3x minus 4. Remember, if the roots come out to be whole numbers, that means you can solve by factoring. If I look at those numbers, those solutions, there's two, and they are real, rational, and unequal. So, the shorter method, if you just look at the b squared minus 4ac in this equation, you do the quadratic formula, so rather, do, uh, rather than doing the whole formula, if I just look here, the discriminant is 25, and that 25 is positive or negative? Positive. Is or is not a perfect square? Is. So when your discriminant is positive, which means greater than zero, any number greater than zero, if your discriminant is positive and a perfect square, your roots will always be real, rational, and unequal. Okay? Now, if your discriminant in this case is 8. 8 still positive, but is it a perfect square? No. So because it's positive, your roots will still be real. You still have two roots. It still crosses the x-axis twice. It's just instead of being rational, they're going to be irrational and still unequal. The only time you have equal roots, remember this is the double root. It's really 4 and 4, but we only write it once. The only time you have equal roots is when your discriminant is 0. Okay? Is 0 positive or negative? No, it's neither positive or negative, okay? Is it a perfect square? Yeah, the square root of zero is zero. Zero times zero is zero. So you can say it is. Bottom line, it doesn't matter. What matters is that when you have a zero discriminant, okay, you have one root, and it's real, rational, and the big thing is they're equal. As I mentioned, the roots are really 4 and 4, but we don't write the root twice. And then last, we have the negative discriminant. It's negative 12. It's not a perfect square, but it can be, okay? When you have a negative discriminant, you have zero real solutions, and your solutions are imaginary or complex page. Yep. So problem number one, they actually want you to calculate it. You can do the full quadratic formula if you want, but all you need to remember is that it's just the number underneath the radical. Before you can find the value, this must be equal to zero. So if I do x squared, if I move all of this to the left side, it becomes negative. But say instead of moving everything from the right to the left, I put the 0 on the left side and move the x squared over. 
Will both equations give me the same discriminant? So some of you say no, some of you say yes. Let's have from Hunter over, you guys do this one. So on the left side of the room, do the left one. Right side over, you guys do this equation, the discriminant. So the discriminant for this one, A is 1, B is negative 3, C is negative 3. For you guys over here, A is negative 1, B is a positive 3, and C is a positive 3. So we're just going to do the B squared minus 4AC. And let's see if we get the same number. Formula is b squared minus 4ac. We both get 21? Yeah. No matter how, what equation you look at. So if you make the x squared positive, because remember in the day, you hand in day two homework today? In the day one homework, I think it was, when you were graphing, when you graph a parabola, okay, that has the same, um, I don't want to say the same B and C term, but with the same three terms to work with, whether you solve it and work with a negative x squared, or whether you solve it and you work with a positive x squared, you end up with the same roots. So root 1 and root 2. They cross the x-axis at the same time. So when you have an equation where you have to put it in standard form, you can solve it or work with a positive x squared, or you can work with a negative x squared, and you still get the same answer. Okay? Number two, it has the picture there. No equation. So if I have a parabola that doesn't cross the x-axis, what type of roots do you have? So we have imaginary roots. How would I describe that type of discriminant? When you get imaginary roots, when your discriminant is what? Negative. Let's do one more for practice. What about this parabola here in blue? How many roots do you have? One root. So when I have one root, what type of discriminant do we have? Discriminant is one root discriminant must be a certain type of number or a certain number, not just positive or negative, it must be zero. One root, it's the only time you have one solution is when your discriminant is zero. What about, which answers the next question? So which best describes the graph of a quadratic equation whose discriminant is zero? Do we have a parabola with two x-intercepts? No x-intercepts, one x-intercept. Summer? One, that's three. Describe the roots. So number four, rather than doing the full quadratic formula, we're just going to describe, use the b squared minus 4ac, the discriminant. So b is negative 2, a is 1, c is 10. So we have 4 minus 40, which is negative 36. That's going to give us what type of roots? Imaginary. And number five, state the nature of the roots. So are they real, rational, equal, unequal, irrational, imaginary? So we need to get it set equal to zero. So it doesn't matter if you leave the x squared positive, the x squared negative. I'm going to, for my notes, leave the x squared positive and add the 12 over. So I have positive x squared minus 8x plus 12 equals zero. To state the nature of the roots, we're going to skip the quadratic formula and just do the discriminant. So b squared minus 4ac, so negative 8 squared minus 4 times 1 times 12. So that's 64 minus 
4 times 1 times 12? 48, which is what number? I think I heard someone say it. 16. Now, when it's a positive number for the discriminant and it's a perfect square, we know it's going to be real because it's positive, but are you going to have rational roots or irrational? Rational. And they're always unequal. The only time they're equal is when you get a discriminant of 0. So that leads us into the next question. Determine the value of k that will make the roots equal. The only time this happens is when the discriminant equals 0. So you set b squared minus 4ac equal to 0 and solve for k. What is your b? So negative 6 squared minus 4 times a, which is 1. c, which is k, equals 0. Now you have an equation with only one variable that we can solve for k. So 36 minus 4k equals 0. Add the 4k over, and 36 equals 4k. Divide by 4, and k is 9. Last one, I want you to flip to that very front page and look at all the cases where the roots are real. If I look at that front page, that table, you have three rows that say real in it because there's only one case when your roots are imaginary. So the roots are real when the discriminant is what? What did you say? Negative. No. When your discriminant's negative, your roots are imaginary. So let's say it's positive. So the roots are real when your discriminant is positive or what number? Zero. So in math, I need a mathematical symbol. So discriminant is b squared minus 4ac. We say it can be equal to 0. So how do I represent a number for the discriminant? So if I want my discriminant to be positive or 0, there needs to be a mathematical symbol in between here. Greater than or equal to 0 is right. Nice job. So b squared minus 4ac, b is 7, a is 2, and c is k. So 7 squared minus 4 times 2 times k, greater than or equal to 0. We solve equations and equalities the same way. So I'm going to isolate the k or put that on one side. 49 minus 8k is greater than or equal to 0. So I'm going to move the 8k over because that is the one difference. When you divide by a negative number, you have to reverse the inequality symbol. So I'm going to make it positive, divide by 8, and 49 eighths is what? Well, 8 times 6 is 48, so it goes in 6 and 1 eighth, because there's one remainder, or 6 point, what? 1, 2, 5. If you don't like the K on the right side, move it to the left side. So k has to be less than 6.125. Inequality means there's an infinite number of solutions. So k can be equal to, when I'm looking at an integral value, that's a whole number that's positive or negative. So the whole numbers that are less than 6.125 are 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, dot, dot, dot. So what is the largest possible value for k out of that set? 6. 